Well, hello, my dear companions. Welcome back. Welcome back to Doc Doc Literate Club, the mod exit music. <laughs> you were so pissed last time when I ended on a cliffhanger. I know, but I thought it was a great ending. But we're going to continue. I watch it intensely, waiting for any sign of movement until I hear the sound of a door chain being unhinged and a deadbolt turning. My heart is ready to jump out of my chest. I don't know what I'll be greeted by, but I await it nervously. Um, oh my god, she's okay. She's okay. <laughs> she's okay. Sassar, what the hell are you doing here? It's Natsuki. Thank god. Natsuki, are you right? What happened to your bruise? Yeah. Oh, shame. Makeup. Makeup, possibly. What bruise is Salsar? Oh, I'm pretty sure she's covering them up. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she's playing dumb, even I. Even though I saw her. What could have happened to her for her to be so devoted to keeping it a secret? I mean, pretty obvious. Before I can reply, she grabs me by the collar of my shirt and yanks me into her foyer. Foyer, 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 yeah. Hey, how do you know where I live? Well... I've been stalking you, <laughs> Yuri told us, but now's not the time for that. Oh, that's the hiccup? Oh, what? Has she been drinking? The other question is, where have you been? I haven't been feeling very good the past few days. No need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe that after what I saw? Natsuki, I know something's wrong. I saw you at the hospital, remember? Oh, that. <laughs> she giggles. That was nothing. I hate when people try to cover their sorrow and sadness and anger sometimes with smiles and giggles and laughter, you know. Ooh. This is not healthy, Natsuki. Don't worry about it. Uh, about that, okay? okay? There's much worse to be worried about. Me. Oh, she's... <laughs> she's drunk. What do you mean? Come with me. I could do with another class anyway. She grips my arm loosely and tries to move me along with her through her house. As she moves, she begins erratically wobbling as though she's having trouble walking. I mean, I shouldn't laugh at this, but wow. She holds tighter onto my arm for support. Hope you brought your favorite snacks, by the way, your favorite blanket, because I want to make these videos a bit longer, you know? Usually with Let's Plays nowadays at least, I want to make the videos around 40, 50, 60 minutes for immersion, you know? But she stumbles and nearly trips. I catch her, wrapping my arm around her chest, pulling her upright. <laughs> thanks. like her. <laughs> at all. Normally, if I grabbed her, for whatever reason, she'd freak out and call me gross or something of that sort. Yeah, she would. But here, she didn't even flinch or say anything about it. Something feels off. I release my grip on her reluctantly and, as she's still staggering her way along, I assist in moving her now up the stairs to make sure she doesn't fall and knock herself us both back onto the steps. We finally make it up the stairs. Natsuki guides me to her room. 
This is a nice room. I don't think we have been in her room before. R what? It's a mess. I think it looks pretty good. The floor is littered with small ripped up pieces of paper. Looks pretty clean. Picking one up, I recognize one of the protagonists of the Parfait Girls. Oh, the manga. Well, we ripped up pieces. Let's, let's see. Let's see. For a little bit small ripped piece of paper. Parfait Girl. Wasn't that a manga she was reading? Oh, did her father destroy the manga? The cover is heavy laminated cardstock and it's ripped in two. There is no way Natsuki was able to tear that in half herself. Not only that, but she had no reason to either. But I could think of someone who does. Tell me in the comments down below if you like to read manga. I haven't really read much manga in my days. I pretty much came into the uh, anime uh, scene quite late, actually. Uh, maybe I should make a video about that sometime. I, I watch a lot of anime, but manga I really haven't got into yet. There's a lot, lot, lot. There's a large bottle of red wine, cap opened, lying on its side on her bed. Only a small drip escapes, staining her bedsheet crimson. There can't be much left of it. I mean, Natsuki is pretty small and a whole bottle of wine. Oh my god. I know she'd be drinking. I could tell if, uh, from the moment she opened the door. The smell. I'm pretty sure. Natsuki, you haven't drunk all of that yourself, right? Looks flustered. Of course I have, you dummy. A bit too much, isn't it? That doesn't matter. I haven't even finished anyway. She retrieves the bottle from the bed. I reach a hand out to take it from her. Not get... No, it's mine. She holds the bottle just out of reach and tries to push me away. She's too weak, however, and I simply move her arm aside. Come on, that's enough. Elsa, please. I need this. Something about the way she said that sent a pang of, pang of dr dread uh, through my body. A pang of dread. Okay, I haven't heard that before. Before I can reach my arm out to stop her a second time the remainder the reminder the remainder of the bottle's contents are gone looking at her beside bedside sorry uh, bedside drawer i see natsuki's phone it is overturned so i can only see her case the case is glittery and pink this <laughs> Drink is nice, Zalzar. Sorry, I'm so bad at playing drunk. I don't drink alcohol, actually. I haven't, be, I haven't uh, drunk any alcohol in many, many, many years. I don't like the taste, and it's not really unhealthy, so that's my reason. Uh, Natsuki, talk to me. I know something's going on with your dad. Please, I just want to help. But I can't if you won't tell me what's going on. This is all the help I need. She collapses onto her bed and giggles. <laughs> I haven't felt this happy in so, so long. I grow only more uneasy hearing that. If this is the length she has to go to in order to escape her demon, just how bad is the demon she's trying to escape from? Ooh, that's beautiful said. Let's save, by the way. As Natsuki begins to snore, her grip on the wine bottle 
falters and it rolls off the bed onto the floor. To my surprise, it doesn't shatter. Instead, it rolls under her bed. Shaking my head, I bend down to pick up the bottle that rolled under her bed. Reaching my hand underneath the bed, I can feel the wine bottle. And something else. I pull both from beneath the bed. Placing the wine bottle on the bedside drawer next to Natsuki's phone, I take a look at what I recovered. It's a white container and made of plastic. Wait, this isn't right. This is a... This is a bottle of pills. Looking for a description, I inhale sharply as I read as I bear this. Ibuprofen. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh my god. Why is she taking... Oh my god, yeah. It's pretty much for anxiety. Uh, I mean, you can use ibuprofen for many kind of reasons, actually, but most, mostly anxiety and uh, stress and such. But it's... I mean, she shouldn't have that. Uh, desperately check the label on the back for date of description. Two, two days ago, the hospital. Yeah, I mean it's like you can have the book for anxiety, for pain, for stress. I mean it's pretty, it's pretty strong, and you could overdose it. And. If she, is, is it empty though? An icy sweat runs down my forehead as, as I begin to panic, running my hands through my hair. I violently shake Natsuki's seemingly less, less lifeless body. Please, Natsuki, please wake up. I grab her hand, it cl cl it's clammy and much colder cooler than it should be. And the wine, yeah, oh my god, no, 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 no. I put my ear next to her mouth to check and see if she's breathing. Thankfully she is, but it's faint. I take her by the shoulders and pull her into a sitting position. I crouch down next to her, supporting her. Natsuki? I contemplate calling an ambulance, but I'm worried that it'll draw too much attention to her house. Come on, you should draw, you should call an ambulance hell with it. I don't care what's happen what happens uh, so long as she lives. I reach into my pocket and my phone isn't here. Use her phone. Use her phone. I reach up onto her uh, bedside table, gripping Natsuki's phone tightly. I bring it to my face and press the power button. The screen lights up, but from behind I shatter the display. The phone is... Oh, she's looking. Hey! I tried to make an emergency call, but the screen is unresponsive to my touch. Natsuki, come on. Dropping the phone, I pull Natsuki in close to me, hoping, praying that she wakes up. I begin to sob, terrified for her life. But Natsuki begins to cough erratically. I'm simultaneously panicked and relieved. He should try to make her uh, puke. Try to make you puke. She opens her eyes and steadily uh, rises to her feet with my assistance. Tell me you're okay. I. Uh, I. She falls silent. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. Jesus. My nose is, is assaulted by the mixed scent of bile and wine as it splashes on the floor in front of me. I realize that you got some on, on my arm. It it stings? Yeah, of course. Puke, of course it stings. Or at least that, that would have gotten the deadly mixture out of her body. 
most of it at least. But she's still in trouble. Naskit turns to me, half conscious, pleading. Elsa, help me. She stumbles back, landing in a sitting position on her bed. I don't. I don't want to die. Look at me, okay? You won't, you hear me. I won't let you die. Ask you listen to me, okay? I'll be, I'll be right back. She nods weakly, barely aware of her surroundings. I need to find her something to eat. Hopefully it should absorb... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, do whatever you can if you can't uh, call the ambulance. Bolting down the stairs, I reach the kitchen. I mean, it's not really the alcohol that is the main problem in this case. It's the... The pills. The drugs. Pretty much the alcohol pretty much slows down the... Uh, metabolism uh, for the pills. So they will stay in the body longer than usual. And they will have greater effect that way, so... The alcohol, in a way, kind of boosts the effect of the pills and makes you overdose. I swing open every cupboard I see along with the refrigerator. Nothing. Not even a slice of... Not any food at home. When did Natsuki last eat? Exiting the kitchen, I look around, all around the house. Hurrying back to Natsuki, I check up on her. She's as pale as ever, but she's conscious, at least. She weakly raises her head to look at me. She looks so... Hey, Natsuki. You need to pay attention to me, okay? Just whatever you do, don't fall asleep, okay? Please. She tries to mutter something, but it's... unintelligible. I have no choice but to leave her again. I've searched everywhere in the house besides her father's bedroom. As I approach the door I notice that it's locked. I ram the door multiple times before the frame gives away. Gives away. Damn. I tumble onto the floor, now littered with splinters. Damn. I rise to my feet and flick the light on. As I search the room for anything that could possibly aid Natsuki, something catches my eye. A few bags from various restaurants around town. I tear them open to find nothing but empty takeout containers. Well, he even... He doesn't even make food at home. The father. We have to go now. Okay. I help her to her feet, wrapping her arm around my shoulder, holding her hand in place. She'll make it. I'll make sure of it. Where... where are we... we going? Somewhere safe. Make our way down the stairs. I keep Natsuki on her feet, though it's proving to be more difficult as she fades in and out of consciousness. Starvation mixed with alcohol and painkillers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ibuprofen is. They are pretty. I mean, uh, yeah, I said, in, I said anxiety before, but yeah, mostly painkillers, if you say so, mostly for the pain. And they are pretty damn strong, so. Uh, but, as you know, painkillers can uh, dim your emotions too, in a way, so. But with the whole bottle of wine too. I mean, it's good she puked. It's... it's... that could have... that could really have saved her life. Clearly taken a toll on her. But she isn't dead. Make it to the front door. With time to feeling like lost luxury, I shot it behind us, moving through the porch. I can feel Natsuki's tears soak through my shirt. We reach the gate and I set her down while I open it. I scoop Natsuki off the grass and close the gate behind us. Holding Natsuki close, I move as fast as I can down the street. 
Would she just, would she just head to an hospital? As we approach the glow of the street lights, I begin to feel relieved. I lose my grip on Natsuki. Can you walk? Yeah. I think... I set her down for a moment. Her knees buckle. Again, I wrap my arm around her. Her arm around me and mine around her. Let's go. Okay. I end up supporting her the entire way through town. There's nobody out to call about to call me out for looking suspicious. I'm almost glad that she's such a small figure. It certainly makes it so much easier to. That's why she's so small. Her father has been leaving her malnourished and li living on fast food. I mean, people can be small, very petite, <laughs> without being malnourished, but in this case, I think it really has it has a big part of it, if you say so. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Finally, I recognize the familiar view of my house. That nuts get down on my front step. I need to save. Oh my god. Oh boy. That was intense. That was intense. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. So many of you have said this. Uh, mod. It's really dark. And first we had Sayori, and now this with Natsuki, and I guess we will have more, but... Whew. I fumbled with my keys for a moment, finally able to unlock the door. Help Natsuki through. She's safe, from her father at least. I mean... I mean she puked, but still we should have taken her to an hospital. Bring her to the kitchen and sit her down on one of the chairs. Elsar? Why did you help me? How did you know where I, where I... Don't worry about it. But don't worry at all at, about all of that now. Let's just get you settled in for the night. The more that it'll be longer than one night, yes. And what we will do in the morning, I mean, her father... Ugh. I have a spare bedroom in my house, she'll be able to sleep there. I search through my pantry and my fridge for something she may like. I decide to just make some toast and chicken noodle soup. Yeah, eat something. Is that chicken noodle? I haven't had that in so long. Her words break my heart. How long? How long has she lived like this? I watch the clock as Natsuki eats. It's late. Now that the immediate panic is over, I lead around that poor Natsuki is still drenched in her own stomach. Ugh. Natsuki, I'm gonna need you to get changed. What? Not here? <laughs> Not here, silly. I mean, you can get changed in a spare bedroom. But I don't have any of my clothes. You'll have to borrow some of mine. Okay. But only because I have to. Natsuki seems to be in much better shape after her meal. Okay, good, good. So good she just could get could get that up, you know. She was able to puke. Uh, she stands up uh, of her own accord to return her bowl to the kitchen counter. She moves slowly, but deliberately. 
despite the stink uh, of bile clogging up my nose, I relatively calm too. Natsuki's skin tone has returned to normal mostly. She still looks scarred by the night's experiences. Once she returns empty handed, I ask her to follow me to her room. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Natsuki timidly complies, wrapping her arms around me. But this time, it hurts. I inhale sharply. Why would it hurt for us? Are, are you okay, Sansar? My shoulder is in pain. Or what we d did we do? Ah, of course. <laughs> we smacked down the door. Of course we're gonna... Our shoulder is gonna hurt. Maybe barging through that door was a bad idea. Hmm. Not only because of the pain, but the damage it caused too. Yeah, her father will flip when he comes home and see that. And sees that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm alright. Don't worry about me. Let's get you cleaned up. There's a shower in the guest room that you can use. We reach the guest room I lo located across the hall from my own bedroom. I motion toward the edge of the bed. Here, sit down for just a minute. I'll be back with something comfy for you. I sit down. Rush into my bedroom, picking out one of my great tops and a pair of jeans. I bring them back to her room. She's struggling to take off her socks. I place her fresh clothes on the bed and kneel down to help her take them off. She opens her mouth like she wants to say something but reluctantly lets me help. I mean, we know from the main game how Natsuki is. She is so, like, don't want, don't want anyone close. Always just tell them how creepy they are or how dumb they are. And I was like, now she actually wants us to help her. She literally asked us to help her. Natsuki has been through too much today. She has next to no strength left. Thanks, Elsar. I can take it from here. Are you sure I really don't... Come on. All the blood in my body rushes to my face. She's going to have a shower. I think she can manage that on her own. Was I about to indirectly tell her I wanted to help? Uh, I... I... Never mind, it's fine. You take your time. I decide that now isn't the best time for to question Natsuki about her family. Instead, she just needs a soothing shower and some sleep. Maybe that'll take her mind off tonight's events. Even if only for a few minutes. Of mo or moments, I misread that, as I usually do. I have no idea why I keep misreading stuff. <laughs> Those few moments would do her a lot of good. As I stand to leave the room, Natsuki grasps uh, my wrist gently. Salsar, wait. Oh, I wanted to thank you again. Don't mention it, okay? I'm just glad I got there in time. Yeah, I mean, if we... Wow. It could have been a really... Yeah. I mean, we were minutes away from saving her. Natsuki stares into my eyes. Me too. How did you know where I was? I walked home with Yuri. She, she was having a bad day, so I went with her. She pointed out your place. Never since I saw you at the hospital, you haven't left my mind. That's why I decided to go. 
I tried calling you God know how many times, but you never answered. Passed my mind back to Natsuki's wreck of a phone. Yes, I know why. I'm pretty sure that's her father, breaking her phone too. I, I saw every one of your calls. Oh. I couldn't answer because of the stupid screen. Oh, I see. And all I wanted to do was hear your voice. I couldn't. I just wanted to go back to the club. Sit with you under the window. To read more together. Because when we do, it's the only time I really feel safe. Well... Not anymore. Of course. Her parfait girl manga was torn apart. She looks down at the ground deject de dejectedly. I leave Natsuki to shower. After getting changed myself, I sit on the edge of my bed, gripping the volume of parfait girls that I bought for her for myself on the weekend. Oh, we should give it to her. We should give it to her. Come on. The water stops running and I hear the all suit door. All suit door. Uh, being opened, closed. I wait a few moments before knocking on her door. Natsuki, I have something else for you. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That looks good on her. Oh, the cells are? Natsuki opens the door, looking healthy again. He's out of dirty clothes and now he's, he's now wearing my shirt. Along with her own pants. Top doesn't fit her very well though. Yeah, I mean, it looks good though. <laughs> this shirt's massive on me. I could get you a smaller top of mine if you... I like it. Don't need to, Salsar. Are you sure? Yeah. I present the manga to her. Please let me see a smile. I, I saw what happened to your copy of Parfait Girls back at your place, so I thought I'd just drop my own in for you. You can, yeah, uh, read it. If you want. Natsuki gives me a weak but sincere smile. He reaches out to grab the manga. I'd love, I'd love to, Salsar. Instead of pulling the manga from my hands, as expected, she grabs my wrist and tries to sit me down on the bed next to her. But only if we read it together. It's the least I could do to, to make her happy. She needs it. So do I, in a way. First having to deal with Sayori attempting suicide. Now Natsuki. God, how terrible must her home life have been for her to want to escape it like that. I don't know if there are different endings to this mod. I, I think it's only one ending. Well, I can't take a guess, considering the complete lack of food in her house. And her face when I saw her in the hospital. Christ. Hey, Salsar. What? You just kind of stood there for a second, spacing out. God, you're worse than Sayori sometimes, you know. <laughs> hey, come on. I'm sorry, okay? It's fine, I was just teasing, dummy. Not that I shouldn't blame her, she doesn't know about Seori's condition. No. I don't think so, at least. And as far as I know, she... Uh, hadn't seen her at the hospital. Yeah, she didn't see her. Yeah, okay, yeah. She only saw us at the hospital. Regardless, that hurt me more than it should have. I move the duvet to the side and sit down next to Natsuki. She pulls the covers 
over the two of us, so, we, so we're sitting up with it draped over our laps. We decide to just start the volume over again. Nelson, you're so warm. Natsuki inches closer to me. We're now shoulder to shoulder. Natsuki, can you, can you see okay? Not really. I inch myself down in a lying position. Natsuki joins me. She's adorable. She's so adorable. Much better. My left arm is awkwardly dormant between us. Yeah, that's usually what happens. <laughs> when you lay next to someone, usually one of your arms, like, you don't know what to do with one of the arms. They, uh, it's just there. <laughs> I slide it under the pillow and around her. Good call. There we go. We continue to read. If you want to know, she's fast asleep. Now, Natsuki? I lay there motionless. I dreamed of this moment ever since I really got to know Natsuki. I hated that it had to come to her due to her circumstances at home, but regardless, I run my fingers through her silky pink hair and I brush her bangs to the side. She looks so peaceful in her sleep. What is this feeling? I feel a lump in my throat. Just the sight of her is enough to make my heart pound. I don't recognize this. My chest is heavy, it feels like there's a weight on my ribs. It's hard to breathe. This... This is the happiest moment of my life. As I drop the manga to the side of the bed, not even the reading anymore, I drift off to sleep. I'm jerked awake by the sound of crying. Confused, I open my eyes and turn to look at Natsuki. She's clutching the sleeve of my shirt, holding me tighter than before. She's sobbing on my into my shirt, furiously, ferociously. Natsuki, are you? I realize she's still asleep. Dying, I lament over. L lament, lament over Natsuki's nightmares. I'm almost certain they related to her family, but I give her a nudge to wake her up. As she seemingly begins to stir, I try to calm her. Natsuki, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. You're okay. You're safe. Natsuki opens her eyes. Zalsar? That... I was more in a dream. A memory? I watched my dad kill you. I watched him torture you for saving me. He kept telling me that this was my punishment for leaving. Sansar, you shouldn't have helped me. This was wrong. This was so wrong. Why, Salazar? Why did you have to get involved? I can't let you do this. Natsuki jerks away from me. Natsuki, do you want to know the real reason I showed up at your house? I missed you. I missed reading with you. I missed reading your poems. And after the hospital I knew something happened I had to make sure you were okay. I was worried sick for days. I felt I had to. I'd do anything to ensure your safety. I'd gladly be tortured if it meant you would be happy. Anything, Natsuki. You understand me? I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. My words right now aren't proving I mean it. Maybe this will. I rise to my feet and walk to my room. Click my light on and rifle through my bag. There it is. 
You. I don't know what's happened or where you have been. All I can think about is bruises on your skin. The blood on your nose dripped onto your clothes. The sight, the sight that broke my mind. For that moment I was frozen in time. I saw you, broken, abused. I knew from there on I would save you. Day turned to night, you on my mind. I've been sick of worry. If I'm going to do something, I need to hurry. Text after text, call after call. The girl I cared about most is the one I couldn't save. After all. I return to the bed, now she turns to face me. I hand her my poem. Natsuki reads, wiping her eyes as she does so. Salsar, I... Natsuki leaps from her bed, embraces me tightly. Return the gesture, wrapping my arms around her. We stay together for a while, her tears soaking through my shirt once again. After a few moments, Natsuki eases her grip. I do as well, resting my hands on her waist. Here's hanging from my neck. Natsuki lifts her, herself up onto her tiptoes and pecks me on the cheek. I want to go back to sleep, but I want you to stay with me. Not wordlessly, Natsuki gently escorts me to bed. Laying my head on the pillow, she keeps her arms wrapped around me. We drift into the void of unconsciousness together. Thursday. Dearly stirring. Stirring, stirring. I can't tell from the snoring figure next to me that Natsuki is... I can tell from the snoring figure next to me that Natsuki is still asleep. And this is where we're gonna end it. I think this is a perfect place to end. Hands down. This might have been one of the most intense, emotional Doki Doki episodes I've ever made. Even from the main game or from the other mods we've tried. Wow. There were so many emotions in this one. Hope you enjoy. Leave a like if you favorite and tell me in the comments down below what you thought about this part. These are some heavy subjects this mod is talking about. And I will finish this to the end. Uh, I know some of you actually told me that mm, Zalzar, you know this is super dark. Maybe you shouldn't finish this. But I will. I, will f I want to see how this ends. Even if it's painful to watch, I think it's important too, because these subjects are so... I mean, they affect so many people. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. I'll see you in the next part rather soon. Never ever, ever ever forget to stay awesome. I'll see you soon. To the Lord.